The fighting in Syria may have taken a dramatic turn for the worse, if that's even possible. Western officials are investigating the possibility of whether the al-Assad regime is now using chemical weapons against rebel forces. And that has U.S. President Barack Obama calling for a vigorous investigation to determine what, if any, chemicals are being used. For more, we're joined by Cameron Bakari. Cameron is an expert in Middle Eastern affairs for Stratfor, a global intelligence company. He joins us from London, England. And thanks for taking time to speak with us this morning, London. Uh, London. Cameron. Morning, Brian. Reports of chemical weapons being used in Syria, are they to be believed or not? Well, we do have the highest level of U.S. officials uh, confirming limited use of the weapon. So, I mean, it does appear that chemical weapons were used. Now, who were they used by within the regime? Was President Assad in on the decision, or was it a local decision? Uh, I mean, these are things that we don't know. And, and why were they used? That's another question, because you'd think that uh, a regime that's under so much international pressure would not uh, use chemical weapons, uh, which would only make its position internationally more worse. Uh, there are so many different theories behind this story. Um, I'd like to explore a couple of them with you, Cameron. One of them is that the rebels are doing this on their own so they can and firing them on their own people so that the West will come in and solve this situation before it, uh, well, as, as, as it continues to go on. They want this to come to an end with Assad being removed by the West. Is that even remotely possible? Well, I mean, here's the problem. I mean, if you look at it from an intent-only point of view, yes, it becomes within the realm of possibility. But in analysis, intent alone is not sufficient. You need to go to capability. And the fact that U.S. officials are talking about specific agents used uh, in chemical weapons suggests that that's beyond the capability uh, of the rebels. I mean, the rebels could use chlorine gas and, you know, some simple compounds. But if, if uh, you know, a known chemical agent has been used and, and those chemical agents have been uh, in the stockpiles of the regime, then one really can't make that argument of rebels using it on their own people. Well, what about the reports that the rebels or some rebel factions have captured al-Assad's or partial uh, weapons cache that may have contained chemical weapons? Uh, again, that is possible, and if, it, if that is the case, then we are in a much dangerous situation than before, because note that one of the red lines of uh, the Obama administration is that if either the regime uses these weapons or they, uh, you know, uh, begin to fall into the wrong hands, i.e. those of non-state actors, uh, then, you know, that would call for, you know, uh, an escalated intervention of sorts. So, uh, again, you know, that intervention, it, what kind of intervention is going to take place remains uh, undefined. Cameron, there are uh, several different factions that are uh, behind the rebel movement. Is it possible that uh, one or more of those factions involved in the rebel insurgency uh, does not necessarily have the best interests of the Syrian people at heart? Well, clearly those who are... Uh, of, you know, the transnational al-Qaeda jihadist persuasion, they, they're not looking at Syria as a nation state or, or, you know, freedom for the Syrian people from the Assad regime. That's just sort of the beginning. For them, they have their own uh, supranational, regional, international aims of establishing some sort of a, a, an emirate or a caliphate in that region, for assuming that they will be successful. Uh, and so that's not in the interest of what mainstream Syrians want or even mainstream Arabs and Muslims want. Well, given that, how is it even remotely possible that the West can get involved on either side of this equation? It just seems like it's, it's it, how do you figure it out? Uh, that is the problem, Brian. I mean, that, that's the, that is the key problem in this con uh, conflict. Uh, you know, you can't uh, intervene because there are so many variables and so many things can go wrong. Uh, you don't want to, uh, you know, be stuck in a quagmire. When I say you, I mean the United States. And therefore, uh, I mean, after, especially in that we're trying to pull out of Afghanistan and we've refrained from going into Libya. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Iraq pullout uh, wasn't too long ago. So I don't think that there is a, an appetite. But then again, 
uh, the, the flip side is the Obama administration and its allies can't sit, uh, you know, idly by while this uh, whole uh, situation un- unfolds and unravels in very dangerous ways. So the question is, there is no question that something needs to be done. The mm-hmm. question is, what can be done in an effective manner? Well, Carmen, last question for you, and, and, and this may involve some rampant speculation, but is it possible for the Allied West to come in and systematically take both sides in hand and wage war on both fronts? Uh, it, it is possible, but then again, um, even if uh, the United States and its allies were to come on to the side of the rebels uh, against the regime, uh, that would require an enormous deployment of resources, military uh, and financial, uh, that if you say, okay, so let's do it on both sides hmm. uh, you know, uh, selectively, then that becomes even a bigger problem in terms of logistics and just capability. So, uh, I mean, one of the key things that we need to keep in mind uh, about intervention is what is the cost and, you know, what will it take to actually pull off a successful intervention? Cameron, as always, I appreciate uh, speaking with you and getting uh, the benefit of your expertise. Thank you for this. My pleasure. That was Cameron Bakari. He's the vice president at Stratford Global Intelligence, and he joined us from London, England.